you're a socially inept crab like myself, a person who has had to do extensive research into how not to come off as a colossal twerp to everyone I meet, or if you're not, today's video might be the only one of my videos that is ever of any real use to you. The way humans react to things often involves cutting corners on rational thought to lead you to a conclusion that is erroneous. There are many ways in which you can do this, and circumstances under which you can slip up, but I want to give you some of what I think are the most important things to consider when trying to acknowledge our blind spots and how we might become more serene, thoughtful, grateful and forgiving, thereby making us more pleasant to be around. Having these biases doesn't mean there is anything wrong with you, quite the opposite in fact, but knowing what they are and how they can work can be a revelation. It was for me anyway. Leave it to the pretentious hermit on YouTube to lecture you about how not to be lonely, I suppose. First up is confirmation bias. Anti-vaxxers, creationists, and climate skeptics all fall victim to this one. That or it's just me. Confirmation bias refers to our tendency to give greater credence to sources and publications that seem to support our beliefs. We talk about reliable sources in media a lot, and too often we find ourselves calling sources reliable just because they haven't asked us to change our opinion. The PSA that goes with this is that it's perfectly normal and honourable to change your opinion. Admitting that you're wrong about something doesn't mean you're weak or unintelligent. So next time someone says something that sounds completely mental to you, try and work out between the two of you which is more affected by confirmation bias. In most cases, it will be obvious. Getting rid of plastic straws will solve climate change. Just plastic straws? Yeah, just plastic straws. Who told you that? My mum. Hmm. Maybe cutting edge intergovernmental climate research should be subject to a touch more scrutiny. Next up, we have fundamental attribution error. This is a type of self-serving bias, where you can give yourself excuses for being unpleasant but become outraged when someone else does the same. Maybe you didn't sleep well or you got fired, and you did something that caused you to leave a sour taste in one's mouth. Instead of apologising, we have a tendency to expect everyone to understand what we are going through and to underestimate what everyone else is experiencing. So we forgive ourselves, contradicting that by becoming bitter at people who behave the same way without entertaining the idea that they might be struggling too. So you know, if someone is being a bit rude, letting doors close on you, tying your shoelaces together, having a go at you out in public, or removing your trousers, covering your legs in whiteboard detergent before stuffing you in a sports bag and taping it to the ceiling. Just be chill. Offer them tea. Next we have the Barnum effect. People who are into horoscopes, personality tests, Ouija boards and psychics should skip this segment if they wish to remain ignorant. This bias means retaining beliefs in pseudoscience by filling in the gaps for the person or thing carrying it out, often subconsciously. Psychics will often say things that are very vague in order to strengthen the chances of them saying something that a viewer might be able to latch onto. Horoscopes and personality tests work in a similar way. Ouija boards rely on its users to subconsciously move the pointer to the correct letter to fit an understood narrative. Sometimes we even behave in a way that incorporates our assigned attributes as another way of subconsciously validating bogus material. Morning, old chap. I made you some coffee if you want coffee? some. Coffee? Don't you know us water moons aren't susceptible to superficial consumerist desires? Well, would you like me to fix anything? Us virtuosos aren't so pathetically dependent on others. Hmm. What are you up to today? I'm off to visit Princess Diana. Next is the ostrich effect. Do you sometimes neglect checking your bank accounts when you really ought to? Or eat hot dogs without knowing what they're made of? Do you avoid checking your test scores or ignore that annoying sound your car is making? <coughs> Do you miss deadlines or reject criticism outright? All of these are examples of the ostrich effect. While it is tempting to bury your head in the sand when faced with information which may elicit a necessary change of course on your part, the ostrich effect is a good one to look out for, as it can really help you pinpoint when your temptations are irrational. Next is the Dunning-Kruger effect. I'm a real expert in this one. The idea of this one is that when you first start learning about a topic, it is very easy to think you understand it extensively, when in reality you likely don't. It is often said that the common thread binding most idiots is that they think they are clever, this is the Dunning-Kruger effect in action. It is particularly dangerous, as the belief it inspires in people that they know what they are talking about inspires them to reject subsequent learning, leaving them arrogant and stupid all the way up to and during their presidency. Please try not to be one of those pillocks who shouts Dunning-Kruger at everyone they disagree with. I've tried it, and I ended up becoming a low-rate YouTuber. 
The point of looking at these biases is to examine ourselves, not others. And this brings me to the last bias I will cover. The bias blind spot has the effect of making it easier for people to spot cognitive bias on the part of others rather than themselves. Don't try and understand what's going on in the heads of other people, especially without first having a reasonable grip on how cognitive bias affects you. Hey Monty, I asked my mate if they wanted to play football and they refused, so that's clearly reactance. And my teacher said my presentation wasn't the best, which is clearly an example of anchoring. He keeps telling us we're the worst class he's ever taught, which is blatant declinism, and refuses to change my grade to the one I deserve because of his just world hypothesis, clearly brought on by optimism bias. I've told him all of this, but the backfire effect is keeping him from coming to his senses. Why don't you drop his class and do something else? You don't need to pass it, do you? I would, but I've already invested so much time in it. Thanks for watching. I do hope I didn't bore you too much. I just find that recognizing the flaws that make me human incredibly compelling, and I hope I was able to convince you of that to some extent. Thank you for waiting around for this video. Until next time, cheerio.